Stop doom scrolling and ditch your phone addiction. You wake up first thing in the morning, what do you do? Reach for your phone, switch off your alarm, go on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, you scroll like a zombie without even realizing it. 10 minutes go by, you're late to take your kids to school or have breakfast or go to the gym, whatever your morning routine is. Then later, you go to your desk, whether that's in an office or at home, and you're really excited for the day ahead. You've got loads of stuff planned for work. But subconsciously, you go to your laptop and without even realizing it, you go to LinkedIn. And again, you start scrolling like a mindless zombie. You see a post by some self-proclaimed sales guru about 10xing your leads. And this makes you roll your eyes, get annoyed. And suddenly 15 minutes have gone by. Your coffee high has gone down. So you make another cot, you go to the toilet and 40 minutes of your day has gone. It's been wasted. Now, the problem in both these situations is you're using social media subconsciously versus consciously. And I've suffered terribly with this myself with LinkedIn addiction. Six years ago, I started to post on LinkedIn, which was actually a great decision I made because it helped me start my own sales consulting business, have a steady stream of inbound leads from sales leaders, marketing leaders, CEOs. And originally I decided to post once a week on LinkedIn. I had zero engagement to start, but after three months I got more. So I decided to post twice a week. And eventually after a year, I said, okay, I'm going to post every weekday. And now sometimes I even post at weekends. Now this has led to me creating a close to seven figure business, profitable with five full-time staff, but there's actually a big downside to this success I've had on LinkedIn. The more success I've had, the more I've chased the dopamine hits of likes and comments and reposts. And this has led to me checking my phone all the time to see if I have more engagement, get some of that dopamine. So when I post on LinkedIn, this is conscious, this is great, this is me using it in a productive way. Or if I DM a customer with a voice note or research a dream client, this is all conscious and useful. But when I go on LinkedIn just to check, start scrolling subconsciously, this is not useful, this is unproductive and this is taking time away from me running my business. As you're probably aware, I'm not the only phone and social media addict. I think a lot of people in the world are suffering from this at the moment. You may be yourself which is why you are listening to this podcast. So I'm gonna provide some solutions today, but first I'm gonna go through some crazy stats. 47% of Americans admit they're addicted to their phones. So nearly one of every two people in the US has smartphone addiction. The average American checks their smartphone 352 times per day. 352 times. That was one of the most shocking statistics. And now some general stats outside of the US. This is based on a survey of 2000 people globally. 71% of people spend more time on their phone than with their romantic partner. How sad is that? No wonder we're having less sex than ever before. 57% of people spend five or more hours per day on their phone. Five hours of your day. That's most of your day. And then finally, these following two statistics are actually really sad, in my opinion. So 60% of those 2,000 people said they wouldn't be able to cope more than a day without their phone. And 55% claim a dying battery is a nightmare scenario. Now, I'm only 35, but I grew up in an era where we didn't have smartphones and we survived. I remember being in Colombia for the first time in 2013 on holiday. And even though we had smartphones back then, generally getting data abroad was very expensive. So you wouldn't use your mobile. Now, I suck at directions. So nowadays, I'm totally reliant on Google Maps. But back then, I used to ask people for directions, even though it was a foreign country thousands of miles away. I survived and I had a great time and we can still do that nowadays. Now, there's a guy you may have heard of called David Goggins. He's a 49 year old Navy SEAL and he talks about his relationship with his phone. Have you got your phone on you right now? I want to hear it. No, <laughs> my, I, I don't travel with my phone. Oh, yeah. My phone does not go with me anywhere. Why is that? Once again, man, like right now I'm with you. A lot of times people are in conversations or they're somewhere, they're elsewhere. You may think they're with you, but they're not. That phone is the biggest distraction in the world. When the time, so when it comes time for the phone, I'm on the phone. We're not, I don't use it. I'm all about being present where I'm at. Now we can't all be like David Goggins, as I'm sure he's got many staff who can use a mobile and manage his calendar so he doesn't have to. But there are some solutions that can help you change your relationship with your phone and social media accounts, which I'm going to go over now. Okay, so number one, leave your phone outside of your bedroom. 
I used to be that classic person that had their alarm clock on their phone. So the first thing I do in the morning was switch it off. My phone is next to my bed, press the snooze button. And then eventually when I wake up, my phone's in my hand from the alarm. So I go on LinkedIn and I start scrolling. Even worse, I would check the news and I think the world's going to end. Not the best way to start the day. Now, the reason this is dangerous is because we have brainwave frequencies that affect our sleep and state of awareness. So when we're in deep restorative sleep, we have these delta waves, right? If we wake up organically, we then go from delta to theta to alpha, and that's essentially making us more awake, right? But when we have our phone, if we check our phone instantly, we go into beta, which actually means we're in a high state of alertness, and this is not a natural way to wake up. So what can you do instead? You can buy a physical alarm clock, you can get these online easily, and then you can leave your phone in another room, which is what I do. Now, number two is also about leaving your phone, but this time in a work scenario, leave your phone outside of the office unless you need it to text or call someone. So typically in a work day, I'm on Zoom calls most of the day, right? And when I'm on those Zoom calls, I wanna be present with the people that I'm speaking with. I don't want the distraction of notifications. Or on Fridays, I actually don't have any Zoom calls and I dedicate it to writing. But even more so, it's gonna kill my creativity with writing if I've got my phone in a room distracting me. Three is to be a creator, not a consumer, and to use social media in your phone consciously, not subconsciously. A crazy stat is only 1% of LinkedIn users, there's a billion LinkedIn users, post regularly, and that just means once a month. And as I mentioned earlier, posting regularly on LinkedIn was a great conscious decision that I made that helped me start my own business. Now, I'm going to tell you another story, a guy similar to me called Will Aitken. Will Aitken is a guy that I trained four years ago when he was a salesperson at Proposify. Now, while I was training him, he said to me, not many people are posting about B2B sales on TikTok. So I'm going to post one video a day on TikTok for a few months and see what happens. He held himself accountable. He did it. He then also reposted those videos on LinkedIn. Anyway, what happened, not only did he become the top performing salesperson at his company, he ended up becoming a thought leader in sales. He's got over 100,000 followers now across TikTok, LinkedIn, etc. So again, he used LinkedIn consciously. But he had the same problem that I had. I've done a podcast with him that we'll put in the show notes where he then started using it unconsciously because he would be going back and he would be looking for his engagement, getting the dopamine hits, the likes, the comments, um, et cetera. So when you're using it consciously, you're doing things like posting, you're messaging people. And the key here is to think when you go on the social media platform, even if it's Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, you need to think, what is the purpose here? Am I going to look at someone's profile? Am I going to direct message someone? Am I going to post? You do that thing and you leave the platform. And maybe you do need to explore other content creators out there, but put time in your diary to do that. Don't just subconsciously go on and start scrolling as that's the thing that's mindless and is going to kill your productivity. And with posting, a lot of the salespeople I train are scared of posting because they're too attached to what I call vanity metrics, which is that if they post and they get zero engagement, they're worried, oh, this is going to make me look bad. And they say, oh, I only reached 300 people with my post, right? And I post regularly. Some of my posts have little as 300 views but some of them have half a million views, right? So it's just the consistency that helps. And the thing that I always say for these posts, again, it's a conscious decision which you're making. You're taking more control of the platform. And even if you reach 300 people, imagine if you were at a business event and you put your video in front of the screen of 300 people, you'd be delighted. But because it's social media, you're looking at it in a different way. So you've got to try and change your mindset and take more control of your relationship with these platforms. Number Number four is to hide apps from your home screen, which is something you can do both on Android and Apple. Because essentially, if you're in that kind of addiction where you subconsciously pick up your phone, you start scrolling through Instagram, LinkedIn, 
whatever it is, this removes that temptation. And actually one of the things I do in certain scenarios, I'll delete apps off my phone. So if I'm going on holiday, I don't want to be looking. I don't want to have that temptation of Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever it is. So I actually just delete those apps off my phone. I know that's not always possible, but if you can hide apps or even delete them, as I said, that's also going to remove that temptation. Number five is customize your feed. So a lot of people complain, oh, I hate all this content that I'm seeing on LinkedIn at the moment. The content's so much worse than it was three years ago or any type of platform people are complaining about it, but you can actually customize your feed. If something annoys you, right, you can unfollow that person and that person's content is not going to show up again. If you like a piece of content, you can also say, oh, I like this content. You can comment on it as well. And you're essentially telling the algorithm that you like that. And also if you're commenting on a post that you like, it's also helping that person as well. So it's like an altruistic part there. So you can customize your feed and that means you're controlling more of the content you see versus Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever it is, they're dictating what you'll see. Number six, this is a bit of a quirky one, which is don't take your phone to the toilet. And something you can do instead is actually leave books in your toilet, right? So, so you may think this is a, a crazy thing to say, but 75% of those 2000 people I talked about earlier who were surveyed said they use their phones on the toilet. And I used to be a classic person like this. I would be scrolling through LinkedIn anytime I went to the toilet. And then I decided a while back to always leave my phone outside the toilet. And when I go there, actually read instead. And every time I'm there, I read, and I end up reading about 20 pages a day of a book. And this kills two birds with one stone. One, you're not scrolling mindlessly through social media. And two, you can actually read books and learn. And then the last one is to go out locally sometimes without your phone. So whoever you live with, whether it's, you know, a partner, wife or husband, or if it's friends or if it's family, um, a crazy stat is 42% of people check their phones at the dinner table. So again, you don't want that temptation when you're going out on a date or some type of activity. You don't want to just be scrolling through your phone. So if you leave your phone at home, and again, if you, I said go out locally, because then you're not so reliant on Google Maps, you can have better conversations, you can be present. And even if it's at home, I know some people who have rules, they don't, there's kind of no phones at the dinner table rules and you can have a proper conversation. So anyway, those are my tips. I hope they're really useful. If you go to the show notes, we're going to list them out one by one. And as I said, I've really struggled with this myself with LinkedIn addiction. It's a constant process. I'm still going through it all the time because I still post on LinkedIn. I've not stopped posting on LinkedIn. It's really useful for my business, but it was really important for me that I change my relationship with it. We also did another podcast with someone called Sam Flynn, who's a social media addiction expert. So if you want to see that, we'll leave that in the comments and we'll see you next week on the next episode of the Cosmic Bridge. Cheers.